this is a model of a dog's knee and it consists of these two main bones, the femur or thigh bone and the tibia or the shin bone and the patella or the kneecap on the front of the knee. In humans we stand with the femur on top of the tibia in this position but dogs stand at an angle of approximately that much. This white band here represents the cranial cruciate ligament that we've been talking about. You can see it allows the knee to do its normal flexing and extending, but its main job is to prevent front-to-back shifting of the femur and tibia. So I can use my hands to try to cause this type of shifting, and you can see when I do that the ligament tenses to take the load. And we can simulate tearing of the ligament by cutting it. You can see when that ligament is cut immediately, you begin to get this shifting in a front-to-back direction. In people and in dogs as well, this is called drawer motion, like a drawer going in and out. And that motion happens when I move it with my hands, but it also happens during weight bearing. Every time the dog steps down, the femur shifts relative to the tibia. The other structure to mention is this gray pad here. That's the medial meniscus. And it's a shock absorber that cushions the impact between the femur and the tibia. When the cranial cruciate ligament is torn and you start to get a lot of this drawer movement, you can see that the back end of the medial meniscus gets crunched between those two bones and can become torn. The way we treat this injury in dogs is via surgery. And the first part of surgery is to look in the knee. That's the first time that we see definitively that there is a tear of the cranial cruciate ligament, and it actually looks remarkably like this with the fibers kind of floating out towards you. This is an image from inside a dog's knee, and you can see the torn fibers of the cranial cruciate ligament. In surgery, we remove the remnants of the cranial cruciate ligament, and then we also take a very close look in surgery at the medial meniscus to see if there's any damage there. And if there is tearing of that back end of it, we remove that portion, that damaged portion. So the next portion of the surgery is to stabilize the knee to prevent this shifting from occurring. And the surgery we use to accomplish that is called a TPLO. It stands for Tibial Plateau Leveling Osteotomy. So it's a bit of a mouthful, but it refers to this thing, the tibial plateau. And that's the flat top of the tibia here. And you can see that normal anatomy in dogs is such that the tibial plateau is not perpendicular to the long axis here. It has a slope of about 30 degrees. And so when the femur comes down and hits that slope, the tendency is for it to shift backwards. So the goal of the surgery is to level that slope like so, so that the femur does not tend to shift. And we do that by making an osteotomy for a cut in bone. And that's this arc-shaped cut you can see right here. So in surgery, we make that cut, and then this piece of bone is rotated by 30 degrees, and it ends up in this position. Now we've cut this bone into two pieces, so we have to hold it together, and we do that using a steel plate and screws, just like if you had a broken bone. And that plate and screws holds this together until the body fuses the bone back together, and it takes about two months. And now in this new geometry, when I move the knee, I can still cause this drawer motion to occur. But the difference is, now in weight bearing, the femur no longer causes the tibia to shift. So there's no longer that front to back translation. So I can demonstrate those two different situations here. This is with the ligament torn, but before surgery. And you can see every time the dog steps down, you get this shifting. And then after surgery, when the TPLO is complete, you can see that now in weight bearing, the joint is stable and it's no longer shifting back and forth. And that's the idea of the TPLO surgery, tibial plateau leveling osteotomy.